Good morning, everyone. We are, we're in Colin. <laughs> we are back into the yellow phase again, and we are back to being live and live streaming, at least I think we are. I can neither confirm nor deny it. Yeah, I have a thumbs up from the back there. <laughs> Welcome to Sunny Ray Baptist Church. We're so happy that you could join us again, once again, in this place, that we can be together again. Um, please stand with us as we open in prayer and begin singing together. Just procedurally, we are, except for the two of us on stage singing, supposed to leave our masks on at all times while we're in this place, even in our little groups. So please join with us. Lord God, lift our hearts toward you, Father. In this time of Advent, in this time that we seek to celebrate, that we, this time that we look forward to celebrating what you have brought us, to celebrating the time of Christmas, God. I pray that you will fill our hearts with joy and with hope, even in this time, even in this year, Lord. May your spirit move in this place and join with us as we worship you. In Christ's name, amen. to be here today, and we want to welcome each of you uh, both live and online today. Glad that you are able to join us and worship together. Just a couple things I want to talk about this morning very quickly. First off, last night we had our first ever Christmas tree lighting reverse parade. Uh, now, the last few years we've had this big Christmas tree lighting. Uh, it looked a little different this year because we had to do it contactless, of course. And so we ended up having uh, people from our church came, decorated their cars, looked like floats you would see in a parade. And then people came and drove through. We had a great time last night. A lot of people from the community just kind of driving by and saw these crazy people with lights uh, and wanted to come in and see what was going on. In fact, uh, there was this one carload of ladies who were from out of town. They said they drove by, saw these lights, had to come in and see what this was all about. And their comment as they were leaving, they said, this was literally the best thing we've seen all year. Uh, and so, you know, we just had a great time together. Thank you to everyone from the church who came out put all their time and effort and energy into making that possible for our community. So thank you for that. Coming up, a couple of things. First off, this Thursday, we have an event called Simply Christmas Jingle Jam. 
I was waiting for a big reaction to that. Uh, nobody knows what that is probably unless you've seen it on Facebook, but simply uh, just a fun event for the whole family. It is a social or physically distanced event, so you won't be here crowded around a group of people. You have to pre-register for this, so we know you're coming, but there's going to be some uh, decorating of some cookies and some games played and, and just a few things like that. It's an event for the whole family. So I want to encourage you to look it up on Facebook. You can see some more details there and register for that for Thursday evening. And of course, coming up uh, less than two weeks away, now we have Christmas Eve, and we always have a Christmas Eve candlelight service here. In fact, we have two of them, one at 4 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock. We will this year again have 4 and 6. Please do go on and register in advance so we'll know uh, how many to plan on in each service, and, and just we can make sure that we are, again, physically distanced in that space. Uh, but we'll come, we'll have our Christmas Eve candlelight service. It will also be live streamed, so you will be able to see it uh, from home as well if you do, are unable to be here to join us in person. I think that's just about all the announcements I have for this morning. Uh, so let's continue in worship together. Please stand with us. Verse 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. To pass, a child was conceived, a virgin girl betrothed in Galilee. The angel came, revealed the ancient plan, a baby boy, Christ the Son of Man. Though she could not comprehend, such a mystery, just a glimpse of you revealed, was compelling her.
Lord God, as the shepherds, as the kings, as the wise men rush to find the newborn king, Father. I pray, Lord, that you will give our hearts, our souls, that urgency, that desire, Lord, to find you and to look for you in this season, God. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Well, as we said earlier, it is good to be back live in person here with you. I, I got to say, when I come up here and I preach to a camera, I really miss you guys. Uh, it is just not the same preaching to a camera as it is to a group of people. Uh, and uh, I do miss you when you're not here, not just because I like preaching to you either. Um, <laughs> I actually like interacting with you too. <laughs> but uh, it is good to have you back in this place today. We've been in this series called Advent Anticipation, and we've looked at some of the Old Testament prophecies. Last week, we looked at a guy named Simeon. Today, we're going to carry on in this series. But before we kind of get into that, I'm just wondering, does anybody here ever wish that maybe even for just one day that you could have the favor of the Lord with you? Does that sound like a good thing? Anybody here want the favor of the Lord? I mean, sometimes we will hear, you know, that may God make his face shine upon you. As if, you know, there's this, there's this time and there's this moment and there's circumstances that can come in life where if the favor of God is upon me, that things are good, right? And if I was here today and I said, listen, I've been talking to God and uh, I can give one of you his favor today. Would any of you like that today? Yeah, I'm thinking at least two of you would by the look of the hands there. The favor of God. We, we kind of think that perhaps if we have God's favor that when we go downtown later on and we want to find a parking spot, that we're going to get the parking spot right beside the place we want to go. We, we kind of think if we have the favor of God that we can go and we can buy a lottery ticket and we're going to have the winning number. We can kind of think that if we have the favor of God that whatever it is that we want, we're going to get because the favor of God, we've come to kind of equate like the genie in the bottle. Boys, if I just have God's favor, then things are going to look really good for me. Just the genie in the bottle come out, give you three wishes, and you get what you want. Well, today we're going to look at Advent anticipation. We're going to look at a particular person. The person we're going to look at found favor in God's eyes. In fact, this person we're going to look at is the only person in the Bible who was present at both the birth of and death of Christ. Does that give it away? No? I don't think that no was for me, was it? <laughs> the person we're going to look at today was not only the only person who was present at the birth and death, this person was also the only one who was present for the birth, death, and also the very first miracle that Jesus ever did. This person that we're talking about is Jesus' mother, Mary. If you have your Bibles, you want to turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, we're going to begin to read at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel went, was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom of his kingdom there will be no end." Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel 
departed from her. The favor of God. In fact, twice here in these verses, she's, she's re- referred to as having God's favor. Right when the angel comes, he says, Greetings, O favored one. And then just a little bit down, he says, You have found favor with God. And so if Mary is anything like us, she's thinking, Great, I can get a parking spot right where I want to go. I can get that lottery ticket. I'll get the big gift I want at Christmas time. I'll get, you know, whatever it is that I've found favor with God. But note what the angel says to the one who is favored. Oh, you are highly favored. Now, you're going to have a baby. Your whole life, Mary, is about to get turned upside down on its head. You are going to have a baby. It is going to be painful. It is going to be troublesome. In fact, this child that you're about to have is going to completely rearrange, reorganize your little teenage life that you have. Your life is about to change forever. Oh, and by the way, can you go tell Joseph that you're pregnant? Remember it said that she was betrothed to be married, so she's engaged. And it also says she's a virgin, so her and her betrothed have never been with each other. And she has to go and tell this man that she's supposed to marry, I'm pregnant. Now, look, I'm a married man. If my wife came to us when we were engaged and, and we had never been together, and she came to me and, and, and said, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant, chances are the first thing I'm going to look at her, do is look at her and say, um, story, let's go, I, I need to hear what's going on. And so she knows she's got to go to her future husband and say, by the way, I, your teenage fiancé, am pregnant. Knowing that the moment she does that, He has the right to disown her. He has the right to call upon those in the community to come and have her stoned. And by the way, in this generation, I'm not talking about smoking joints. I'm talking about people picking up rocks and throwing them at her until she is murdered. Stoned to death. They had that right to do to her because she was pregnant by some other means than the man she was betrothed to. And this was the right that they would have. So Mary, just, you found favor with God. You're pregnant. Now go tell your husband, your future husband, go accept all of the consequences that will come from this. And we think being highly favored means we're going to have good fortune in our day. Maybe some of you are here today or watching online, you're thinking, man, this has been a string of a year of just things that have happened in my life. Like, it's just one thing after another, after another, after another. I wish that God would just favor me because for the last nine months, for the last year, for the last ten years, whatever it is, my life just seems to be this constant turmoil of things that are going on. And did you ever think that maybe in the middle of the turmoil, that is God saying to you, that doesn't mean that you're not favored. In fact, that could absolutely mean that you have found favor with me. Did you think that in the middle of the turmoil, that actually could be the favor of God upon you? Because Mary's life entered turmoil the moment that she found favor with God. And was with child. You who are highly favored. We carry on in the reading. And the angel says in verse 31, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and would be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary's response to that is this. How will this be since I am a virgin? Now, when you look at what the angel has said to her, you're going to have a child. 
And then he goes on and describes this child. He describes the greatness that will be Jesus. The greatness that will be the Son of God being born into this world who will remember for hundreds of years the promised one who would come. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago in the prophecies. The one who would come to fulfill all the prophets. Who would be the ultimate prophet, the ultimate priest, and the ultimate king. And the angel says, he is going to sit on the throne of his father David. He, the angel is saying, this is the new king of Israel. But Mary got stuck at the beginning of what the angel said. She's, I don't even know if she caught any of the fact of who this child would be. She's like, wait a second, did you say I'm getting pregnant? How is this supposed to happen? And I wonder if sometimes in our lives, God comes and, he, and he, He's telling us the incredible things that are going to happen, and He's talking to us, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. He's telling us through His Word that there is a day when He will come again and He will reign in this earth. And we kind of get stuck, wait a second, uh, did you tell me I was favored because today hasn't been a good day? Mary is stuck back where the angel started. Yes, Son of Most High. Yes, he will rule over the house of Jacob forever on David's throne. But did you tell me I'm pregnant? How is this supposed to be? Didn't you know, did you fail biology, Mr. Angel? Because I'm a virgin, and you know, here on earth, it doesn't happen that way. She's stuck in that moment. She has an angel speaking to her telling her that God is coming to reign once again. Remember, 400 years have passed that God has been silent. And now an angel is speaking to her about what God is going to do and how great and mighty and wonderful this one who is coming will be. But she's stuck at the beginning. You see, the things that Mary may have anticipated... She may have anticipated when she woke up that morning that, man, I'm going to get to see my fiancé today. Boys, I don't know what the day holds for us, but I anticipate this day. I'll promise you she did not anticipate an angelic visit. And in that angelic visit, she never anticipated that he's going to look at her and say, oh, by the way, you are pregnant. But her current reality was this. She's pregnant and who is the one who is conceived in her? It is the Son of the Most High. It is the one who will sit on the throne of David and he will reign over the house of Jacob. And there is no end to the kingdom of the one who is conceived inside of Mary. You go through this story of Mary and Joseph, and we read that Mary was highly favored, and we think there must have been something very special about Mary. What is it about Mary that set her apart from the rest of, rest of the created world? What set her apart in that moment? She was chosen to be handed the job description of giving birth to God. That's quite a job description, by the way. I mean, moms, you have the most incredible job description in the world already. Add to that, moms, if your child that you're carrying is the creator of the universe, that is one massive job description. So who was she that she would find God's favor? Who was she that God would look at her and say, that's the one I am going to bless her. Remember in, in what was read earlier, she says that all generations to come will call her blessed. So who was she? She was an ordinary teenage girl. That's it. Who was she? She was an ordinary teenage girl. There is one thing that we know of her at this point in time in her life that sets her apart to be so favored. And that one thing comes at the end of the discourse that we have between her and the angel. In verse 38, Mary said, 
Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. What set her apart? She was willing to have the favor of God put on her to the point that it would disrupt her life, that it would put her in potential physical and societal harm, to be possibly shunned from everyone that she ever knew. And she said, bring it on. If this is what God wants me to do, I am his servant. What set her apart? She was an ordinary girl willing to be used by God. And If you were to ask me, how in the world is God going to be brought to this generation in this day and age, in the year 2020, in Canada? How is God going to be brought into this world? He's going to be brought by average, ordinary people who are willing to be used by God. Let me rephrase that. I'll put it in the Christmas version. How is God going to be birthed to our generation? God will be birthed to our generation through average, ordinary people who are willing to say, I am God's servant. May he do to me as he has said. I believe strongly that our world needs people who will do exactly that. This. When you think about it, I said it is an incredible job description that Mary had. She was given the task of being the mother of God. And, and so, God, who created everything in the natural world that you see around you, somehow is going to leave glory in, in terms of He's all present. He's going to leave His all presenthood, and He's going to put on fingers and toes and a nose, and he's going to be formed inside the belly of Mary that she can birth him into this world. Did you know that you and I have the exact same job description as Mary? Because when we call on Jesus Christ to come into our lives, to to act on our behalf, interceding before God on our behalf, we have been given a gift. It is the Holy Spirit of who? The Holy Spirit of You can answer this. I know you have masks on, but you can still answer. The Holy Spirit of God living inside where? You. Living inside of you. The Holy Spirit of God is living in you. And he is there that you can literally bring him to this world that the world might know that he is Lord. We have the same job description that Mary had. She was to carry God inside of her and bring him to the world. We have the same role. We carry the Holy Spirit of God inside of us that we might bring Christ to the world. This is the job that we have. Now sometimes, if you hang around church long enough, you're going to hear people who say, Boys, I wish God would bring a revival. I wish he would shake things up a little bit. I wish he would just come and and we would see just the change in people all around. I think God says, "Um, I did that already. I showed up and I put my Holy Spirit inside of you. You want to pray for revival to come in this place? I've brought it. It lives in in you. See, sometimes we want God to just do all these things outside of us. We want Him to change the world around there, and we just want to be able to sit back and say, oh, isn't God great? Look what He's doing. And God is saying, I have put all the power of everything that you read in the New Testament when Jesus did all of His miracles and, and everything that He has said and did. He said, I have put all of that power inside of you through the Holy Spirit of God, and I've given you a job description to go into all of this world and make me known. To birth Jesus to this world. Church, we come to Christmas with the anticipation of celebrating the coming of Christ. As as people who, most of us here would be people who would follow Jesus Christ as Lord, then when we anticipate Christmas, we anticipate 
that, that this is the celebration of Jesus coming to this earth. But do we also anticipate that daily we know that he not only came to this earth, but he died and rose again that we might know him. He ascended into heaven, and before he went, he said, it is better for you if I leave. Why? Because there's another one coming. The Holy Spirit will come, and he will bring power and courage and strength and challenge into your life that you might make me known. Jesus, the one who we celebrate that he came as a baby, says to his disciples, the people who would follow him closely, it's better for you that I'm leaving because the Holy Spirit will come. And some 2,000 years later, we sit in this church and we have the Holy Spirit of God present and active in this place. And somehow we can sit back and say, but we want revival to happen out there. And God says, I've brought revival to this place and it lives in you through my spirit. Are you willing to be my servant? Are you willing to go and bring me into this world? One of the things that's happened in our culture is, is we like the easy way around things. If Mary had heard this proclamation from the angel and wanted the easy way around things, she would have said, um, I'll tell you what, my neighbor is a really nice person and you should go and show your favor on them because I don't really want my life disrupted. I don't want to be put out of my nice, comfortable little space where I am right now. I don't want to have to step out and bring God into this world. I don't want to go through all of the pain that that will bring, literally physical, emotional pain that it will bring. I don't want to have to watch my son die on a cross. But her response, she said, I am the Lord's servant. Sometimes I get upset over the most silly, mundane things. Sometimes I walk down my street, my neighborhood, I walk around here, around the church, without any consideration of the people around me who don't know Christ. Mary said, I am your servant. May it be to me, as you have said, I will bring Christ into this world. Church, if I could have one prayer for the year 2020, it is not that COVID disappears. It is not that somehow this new Pfizer vaccine that's on its way does exactly what it says and we're all able to go back to our regular lives more quickly. My prayer is that the church of Jesus Christ would recognize that we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us and we would say, may it be to me as you have said, we will go into this world and we will teach and we will preach and we will baptize and we will see this world make a decision as to who you are, God. We would see our neighbors come to know him. We would see family come to know him. But we have got to be less comfortable than we are now. We have to come to a place where we say, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Let's pray. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. God, as I repeat these words over and over, I repeat them 
Because God, I need, I need to do exactly what Mary did. I need to say, Lord, you, you have put your spirit inside of me. Not so, God, not so that I can quench the spirit, not so that I can just kind of hide the spirit, not so I can keep the spirit to myself. But God, so that your power and strength live inside of me to make your name great in this world, to, to literally birth Jesus in this generation. So Father, I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. But God, I pray that this sermon was not just preached to me today. I pray that each person who comes into this Christmas season, who reads this Christmas story, would be willing to have the same response. Father, we want to be your servants in this world. Forgive me for the times when all I do is look upon myself. All I do is look to my own gain, my own glory, my own hopes, my own dreams, my own thoughts and anticipations of what this day and tomorrow and the next week will bring. And I miss your word to me. Or just asking me to be your servant. So God, I repeat one more time as we close this prayer. I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. God that, that I was offering myself just a few minutes ago. Would you be willing to just repeat this phrase after me just a couple of times? 
I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. I pray that this is a prayer that you will continue to say over this Christmas season. You will continue to make yourself daily a servant of the Lord, to open yourself to Him. That no matter what His Word has said to you, that this is what is going to be. That you will be willing to acknowledge the Spirit of God living inside of you, to do the part that is sometimes so difficult, sometimes painful, but to bring the gift of Christ to this generation and this world. May God bless you this week. Just a note for those of you who are here in a place that if you want to stay in your seats for a minute and just talk kind of from one seat to another to people, you're able to do that. But as you're able, we'd ask you to just head out this door around to your cars from here. God bless you. Have a great week.